Hello and welcome to the second part of my League of Legends roundup for July 1st where we cover the LEC games that took place week 3 day 1. Yeah, week 3 day 1. So uh, if you didn't watch my videos before, I take notes on the games in the instance that you weren't around to watch them or you didn't want to watch Misfits versus BDS or whatever and you just waited till G2 and Mad played and you really don't know what happened, I go over the game and uh, I give you just for what occurred. So game one between Misfits and BDS, both teams one and four coming into this. Misfits would open it up by going bot lane at three minutes. BDS respond by taking a cloud. Misfits get a kill mid. Misfits take an infernal. BDS would dive top, and that's all that would happen during the first 14 minutes of the game. Misfits up 2-1, 1k gold. They would then go mid and get a kill. BDS would take a hex tech. 19 minutes would be a trade of kills and bot. We'd see a big fight around uh, the hex tech drake at 22 minutes when BDS would go to soul point. However, Misfits would win the fight on the turn 4-0. Vethio with a double. That would lead to directly to a Baron and a 6k gold lead. Misfits would use the Baron to get a kill bot, get a kill mid, take another Hex tech after the Baron expired. And at 29 minutes, they would win a fight 5-1 in the jungle. Vethio with a triple. Neon with a double um, to end it out. Neon ends up being MVP because there were probably three times that stuck out in the early to mid games where he came like, under 50 HP from getting kills. His case I was dealing a lot of damage and getting these players low on the side of BDS, but just was just one auto attack off of getting kills. So he ended up being MVP in my opinion. Vathio also played a very good game. It's nice to see him come out and perform well, given that um, they've had so, so many struggles this split. Vitality and SK. Uh, Vitality... Um, you know, needed this win. In SK, Jezu was out. Gadget was in. Jezu, I guess, is sick. So, um, SK opened it up by taking a Hextech Drake. They went with Karthus Bot because Gadget is known for playing weird picks. Unicorns of Love. I remember 2020 Worlds where he picked all sorts of different stuff. Him and No Man's um, live in infamy to me for that. So, like I said, they take a Hextech. Uh, they go 2-0 in the jungle. Um, Vitality responded by taking Infernal. And uh, the game slows down. At the next Drake, we'd have our next fight where Vitality would take a mountain, 3-2. to two. By the way, Vitality pulled out the Belvath. 12.12 um, .12 started with LEC today. So expect my 12.11 video probably Tuesday where I recap the um, uh, highest, you know, most, um, most common champion matchups. So, Belvath, our first Belvath. Um, at 18 minutes, Gen, Gen X would solo kill Perks. Gen X on a Camille, Perks on an Ari. SK would then get a kill top lane, and laning phase would end very late at 19 minutes. SK up 6-3, golds tied. Vitality at 21 minutes would win a fight 2-0, get pushed off the Baron, and win a second fight 2-1 to secure the Drake, uh, the, the Purple Worm, giving them a 3.5k gold lead. Towards the end of the Baron, they would win a fight in mid 2-0, go to Mountain Soul Point. At 28 minutes, Vitality get a pick, giving them a Baron, their second of the game, a 10k gold lead. At this point, Vitality were up 10-7. Karzi was 3-1-6. and six. And then at 30 minutes, Vitality on 4-2 and bot Haru with the triple. Haru ends up being MVP for pulling out the Belvath, being the first one to do it. Um, played very well. You know, my first time really seeing the champion. Um, you know, he did well. Vitality came back because SK were really in control of this game for what seemed like the first half of it. Game three, Rogue versus XL, a big one. Uh, Rogue needs this. Similar to how I said Vitality needed that, Rogue needs this. You know, they're on the fringe of the top 25. Um, I expect them to be in my power rankings next week, depending how tomorrow goes. Um, they would open it up by diving top at four minutes. XL respond by going bot lane to get a kill a minute later. Rogue then would go bot and go 2-0 at 7 minutes. This prio gave them an infernal. 13 minutes laning phase ends. Rogue's up 3-1, 3.5 K gold. Uh, the teams then would exchange trips mid at 14 and 15 minutes. Excel take a cloud. And then Excel would go bot lane at 16 and 19 minutes to get a couple kills. This prio and um, attention bot side would gain Excel a mountain. At 22 minutes, Excel win a big fight 5-1. Finn with a triple kill on uh, Kale to secure the Baron and tie gold up. Uh, at 24 minutes, however, Rogue would find four kills. And it was kind of weird how it happened. It was like that whole, like, one at a time. Like, it wasn't a big team fight. It was like, oh, they got a kill here. They got a kill here. Oh, they just 
it was like Excel just kept going into Rogue and dying one at a time. Larson and um, Comp with double kills each. Rogue then take a mountain and at 26 minutes, Gold's tied 9-9. Rogue have a slight 1.5k gold lead. Um, Patrick is 3-1-3 and, and Malring is 2-2-4. Two, two and four. At 31 minutes, Rogue take a Baron, winning a fight 3-0. Comp with a double. That gives them a 5.5k gold lead. And then they would end with that Baron, pushing towards the Nexus. And then a bunch of chaos would ensue around the Nexus. I mean, tons of kills everywhere. Larson, Comp, and Marcoon all get double kills. Rogue end up winning 17 to 12. Odo Omni ends up being MVP. I thought his gangplank was really impactful and it didn't show up on the score sheet, but he dealt a ton of damage and really like made a big difference in the top lane. Like he dominated the top lane and, and played very well in my opinion. So Odo was MVP. Normally I don't give Odo MVP because I mean he is usually weak side king, but I thought he was very, um, you know, under the radar sneaky good in this one. Fnatic versus Astralis, um, not a lot happened here as you see uh, uh, written on this board, but it's made up for in the last game. So Fnatic get a mountain before we take first blood at 9 minutes when Astralis would win a fight in uh, top 2-1. At 10 minutes, Astralis take a Rift Herald, Fnatic punish them 3-0 for doing so, upset with a double. Fnatic would then take a Cloud. Um, at 17 minutes, Fnatic ends laning phase up 4-2 and 4k gold. At 18 minutes, Astralis would take an Infernal, and Fnatic would punish them for doing that. Winning a fight 4-1, Wonder, and Upset with doubles. This would lead to Pryo over Baron. So, Fnatic took a Baron pretty much immediately at 20 minutes, winning a fight 3-1. Upset with a double, giving them a 9.5k gold lead. During the Baron, they would get a kill top lane, and then the game would slow down between 23 and um, 30... Well, actually, between 23 minutes and 32 minutes, we had no kills before the game started to end. In this window of 23 to 32 minutes, Fnatic would go to Infernal Soul Point, take the Infernal, um, go up 12-4 in kills. So, I mean, at this point, they are up 12-4 in kills because they didn't gain any more kills in this window. But they went up to 13k gold. Wonder was 2-0-8 on the Gragas. They take a Baron uncontested at 30 minutes, giving them a 13.5k gold lead. And then they finally ended 32 minutes, winning a fight 4-3. Final score 16-7. Upset ends up being MVP. A lot of those double kills in these team fights around objectives punishing Astralis time and time again which meant that Astralis despite getting the objectives actually were not gaining leads um, by taking them now Mad Lions and G2 G2 fall once again um, this time to a team at their level but nonetheless um, this is the thing so Mad Lions get a 2v2 kill three minutes to start this one off G2 respond by getting a pick in the jungle G2 then get a fight in top two for one. Yankos with a double at six minutes. Seven minutes, Mad Lions go 2 0 in the river. G2 take a hex check and they find a pick. So, through 15 minutes, Mad Lions are actually ahead. 5 3 in kills and um, 3k gold. At 16 minutes, Mad Lions would attempt to go mid and gank caps. Caps would outplay it, uh, trading kills one for one. G2 then take an infernal. And then Mad Lions make it a point to really get caps. In a hole um, they would kill him in mid and then kill him in top as the laning phase went to the mid game uh, mad Li the game would slow down though between 19 and 29 minutes we had no kills in that window mad lions would take two clouds to match the two drakes g2 took during laning phase at 29 minutes mad lions win a fight 4-2 niski with a double to secure baron giving mad lions a 6k lead at this point they're up 12-6 in kills and niski is 4-0 and 6 Mad Lions use the Baron to go to Cloud Soul Point. After the Baron expires, they get a pick. There's a big fight at 35 minutes in the jungle in mid lane that goes 4-3. to three. Flackhead would get a double kill for G2, but Armut and Unforgiven get double kills for Mad Lions. Unforgiven saved that fight, in my opinion, and in doing so, won them the game. Because at that point, they had a big gold lead, but the Zeri was really powerful for G2, so they... They really had no answer for it throughout the entire game, even when they were up 10k plus gold. Um, so after this, Mad Lions take the Baron, and G2 take a Cloud to go to Cloud Soul Point themselves. Mad Lions choosing the Baron over the Soul. Bar um, matter up 10k at this point. G2 are able to defend their base uh, at 39 minutes, 1 for 1. At this point, G uh, Mad Lions are up 18, 10 in kills. Unforgiven was 6, 3, and 5. 
And Mad Lions would finally end at 42 minutes, winning it by 4-0 in the jungle. Armit with a triple on GP. Final score 22 to 10. So um, good game out of Mad Lions. Mad Lions continue to look very good. They I mean they should be five and one. Rogue stole a game from them, but that lit a fire under Rogue, and Rogue has been winning ever since. So um, we'll see how the LEC continues to, you know, perform on the stage as we get to week three, day two tomorrow. So like the video if you like it, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Um, if you missed part one earlier today, T1 played, um, Victory 5 played as well, so I covered their series. Damwon played. And did EDG play? I think EDG played. I don't know if I mixed my days up or not. But nevertheless, uh, there's that video. And my sneak peek will come out shortly after this one. Where I go over the games that are supposed to take place tomorrow in the LCK, LPL, and LEC. My LCS sneak peek will be separate. And it will include both Saturday and Sunday's games in it. To guarantee that I can get a sneak peek out for... Um, the LCS, that's what's been causing me problems Saturday nights as the LCS goes so late. So the sneak peek doesn't get out on time, so I'm deciding to do it this way. So stay tuned for that. Hit the notification bell so you get notified when it goes up. And thank you for watching.